What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome to the Weekly Toast, episode three. We got my boy Bam, EE, Charles, and I here ready to break down what's going on in the Multiverses community. And guys, we actually got a lot to talk about. We got Ranked. <laughs> Ranked is here. Black Adam is here. And there's been some net code improvements. So where do you guys actually think we should start? Man, dude, there, like you said, there is so much, man. And I, I know that you were talking about just the... Uh... I mean, I know that you were talking about just, yeah, having like ranked in Black Adam. But I mean, even like Silly Q and like and all these kind of things, it, like a lot of stuff has transpired um in multiverses since we've last talked man yeah um yeah it's insane but i'm down to talk about black adam man i I know you're excited about him i know you're excited about (laughs) all all black everything baby yes absolutely did you see the movie down i did not see the movie okay i saw the movie you didn't see the movie you were excited about the character i mean i like the character i mean (laughs) Come on now. Uh, DC has butchered a lot of these characters. I love Rock, man. I I, I love Dwayne Johnson, but (laughs) DC DC has not been the best when it comes to that. Their animated stuff is crisp. The the actual cinematic universe has been rough. So I I waited. I still keep hearing, like, you know, 50-50 on people. But that's enough for me. So I will go see it. But that's why I waited, because Uh I got to keep it a buck. I will say that I think the Black Adam movie itself, that project, a good start to hopefully a revamp to the DCEU. Uh huh. I'll leave it at that. No spoilers. I'll no spoilers. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. I was a uh, that, that was like my first ever introduction to Black Adam. Like prior to this game, I actually didn't know who Black Adam was. I never heard of him at all. So yeah, I know. I see you shaking your head, bro. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, man. I know. I knew. I'm, I've been a fan all this time, bro. It's like, <laughs> nah. I didn't know him at all. So seeing that movie it was just kind of interesting to get, I guess, some of the backstory to the character. But like in relation to, I guess, canon, how he is in the comics or even like the movie, how do you think that was translated over to multiverses? Um, I mean, I think his move set is pretty is pretty true uh, as is his his appearance. I saw some people like post like this doesn't look like the Rock. I'm like, that's because the Rock <laughs> is. An interpretation. He's not a comic. He's a gross outlier. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's the Rock, so they're gonna let him play whoever they want. Yeah. You can play. Fuck. You can play Forrest Gump in part two if he wanted to. Like they'll make exactly. it work. It's the Rock. Okay. Yeah. Do whatever he wants. Yo, talk to him, man. No, he's you know? good. He actually uh, fits in line with a lot of the uh, the comic book stuff, man. Like you know what I mean, like. Uh, and, and the thing is, too, it's even down to his play style, right? Uh-huh. He he is extremely fast. He his movement kind of reminds me of Superman's, right? Where it's like he has really good like dashes. So like you could chain the dashes together. He just zooms across the stage. Obviously, he's got like that command dash that sets up that orb as well. Um, he has a combination of like strong hitting attacks, right? Like a Superman, you know, like honestly, if you're looking at other platform fighters like a Ganon, like he has some kind of insane hitting, hard hitting move. That's a comparison but, I've heard a little bit. Like, okay, yeah, he's man. like the Ganon of this game, bro, but that's not a good thing. You don't want to be the Ganon no, it's, of it's anything. Not, it's, not, it's not. But it's like, honestly, it's like what pop people would probably want Ganon to be, right? Because Ganon is supposed to be a wizard and have all these other moves. And like Black Adam has that. Like, I, I think for Black Adam, when I, initially, when I first initially picked him up, right, I'm like, okay, his movement's really good. His command dash with his orb is sick, man. Um, and I love how they went ahead and they're like, all right, the way we're going to balance this is that, uh, you know, he needs to re- like get the ammo back, right? It's going to be ammo-based. Like, okay, yeah. cool. Um, has the command grab, right? Um, has the strong hitting attacks I talked about before. And then he has, you know, he- he's able to do the special where, like his aerial specials where he's able to have those orbs at a 45-degree angle, which is classically a very, very strong option. And so... He's he's just an all around good character, man. Like he can weave around characters and just kind of pin them with those. You can do it twice, and then afterwards you can go for a sare. And his sare is like really strong and kill off the top. Some at early percent, certain characters you can actually do a sare, dash forward, and turn around sare again too. And that's happened to me uh, when I was playing Superman against a Black Adam as well. So the character has some great options. I mean, even his uh his down attack. Right, like he has that special where it's Uh like it goes and brings lightning from the ground, but it tracks people. So someone could be hanging on the side of the edge, right, all the way down at the bottom, and you can do that move and it hits them, right. And so, like, he just has a lot of unique options. Uh, His specials are really cool. 
Um, I think they're really well thought out. The movement is very fun. Just a lot of things that I, people come to love about toolkits in multiverses, he has. So I love that. And he has uh, moves that are strong, but they can be whiff punished, which is really nice. It's like it's very um, cathartic to have stuff where you're like, hey, that's a really strong move. But like if you miss it, like I can't hit you for it. So what do you think about him uh, pre-patch? Because he most notably got a shit ton of buffs uh like a few days ago so do you think he was this good prior because when he was coming out this is the first time i've seen a character drop and the community is actually for once not asking for it to be nerfed to the ground instead ask for buffs actually funny enough yeah the character was still fine like obviously the buffs help and i don't think by any means he was broken or anything or he didn't need the buffs Uh uh-huh i think one of the weaker things about him is just how slow his moves came out um, I know they did buff. I believe one move got a little quicker. The, also, I think it was the uh, the clap, the the neutral air. Right, right, yeah. which is a big deal. So making his moves faster, or it, it's just you got to be really careful because if Black Adam's moves comes out too quick, then he's like extremely overtuned, right? So uh, I think I think the buffs were in the right direction. I think the biggest issue with him is. When he goes for certain moves, his uh, hurt box extends out for a frame, and yeah. then his hit box comes out. So there's a lot of situations where like you're trying to go for a trade, or you're just trying to command space in neutral with a move, and you extend your hurt box out, and then you know for that one frame you get hit, and stuff like that. I think that's like the biggest issue about him. If they changed like the hurt box shift, that probably would be the biggest buff instead of just outright buffing his frame data. For sure, and that would be a bigger buff. But yeah, I mean, other than that, it's just he has a bunch of powerful tools. Like he has one of the best disadvantages in the entire game, along with his, uh, y- you know what I mean? Like just just being able to float really high up is such a good option, and that's really good offensively for chasing down in a lot of the juggle situations as well. So, and also, and also, we just need more time with the character, right? For so, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like I do think the buffs were again in a good direction. I do yeah. like it. We're still discovering a lot about the character. There could be potential like certain characters that go really well with him. I think his vertic- vertical pressure is absolutely insane. Yeah. And survivability again, absolutely insane. So those are like the things that stuck out to me the most about the character. And if you can pair another character that goes really well and can kind of support Black Adam or have Black Adam support the other character in those avenues, I think you can have a really crazy team. I agree. <laughs> Yo. All right, hold up. <laughs> chat, dude. What, what, what's wrong with this chat, man? <laughs> Nothing, bro. <laughs> what's wrong with this chat? <laughs> Nothing is wrong with this chat anyway. <laughs> All right, I got you know, someone take lead. I, I, I keep laughing. You know, your mom. Anyway. Sorry. All right. So anyway, uh, I've been playing Wonder Woman and Black Adam, like with yeah. Void, obviously. When the Black Adam first came out, I was like, kind of like side end, like, oh, shit. OK, this is going to be interesting. Right. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I, I, to be quite honest, I haven't seen too many Black Adams. Not as many as I thought I would. Right. But out of the Black Adams I've seen so far, it feels like Void, funny enough, is the most developed one currently. Uh, you always turn over your partner, bro. It's 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 just like, all right. No, like he is. He definitely is. Like, no, dude, I, I, I'm I, just I, keeping I, it a buck. I'm keeping it a buck. Bro, I've seen the clips. I've seen From what I've seen, that, that Black Adam is smooth, right? And it's been interesting. I miss the Tom and Jerry, obviously. I think most people miss Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry's in this kind of like, and not to make this about Tom and Jerry, but like Tom and Jerry loses to a perk. Imagine that. Oh, Tom and Jerry, apply school me once. Okay, he's not a character anymore. You don't got to worry about him. I do hope that gets fixed because to be taken out of the game by one perk, that's just not fair for any character in the game, you know? But uh, so he's been playing Black Adam. He tried the Morty too, but Black Adam, it seems like, and I think, bam, we were talking about this. If you have a character that can, or was it Charles? If you have a character that can support him vertically, then he becomes a lot more dangerous given that he's able to carry people to the top of the screen with like relative ease, right? So the whole Wonder Woman to Black Adam dynamic is strong. He's just still pretty awkward for me to, I want to say combo off of at times because I'm still trying to understand him in my, you know, like in my own way too. But uh, Mm. yeah, 
It, it's going to be interesting doing that with Void because uh, I don't know if he's playing Black Adam just because he's fun or because he actually wants to main him. You know, can't play his main, so he's soul searching right now. Uh, but yeah, I think that the impact that Black Adam has on the meta right now, I don't think people are aware of it yet. Uh, and honestly, I don't know if there's going to be like a cap for it too. Like, I don't know if like his peak is going to be really low or really high. He's just a very awkward character for me personally. Like I tried playing him myself. It was fun, but like definitely not a character I would sit around and play with too much. You know, I'm still sticking true to Wonder Woman until my one character, I don't know who it is or when they'll come or if they're out there. But yeah, every every time a new character comes out, I'm like, oh, all right, let me see if I can uh, move with this. You know what, man? Y'all have fun, right? Yeah. It's just not for me, but they're fun as hell. I, actually, you know what? I take that back. Stripe is goofy. I like Stripe. I might put some more mileage into that. <laughs> yeah, Stripe Stripe is, really I, like, I like Stripe over Adam personally, but. Sharp is a goon, same, man. Same, that yo. character is the <laughs> goon, he's a bro. I like that. He's a robber. Chaotic, he a robber. baby. It's chaotic. He's, he Rob, is very Robin fun, but he, gun, is, but he is a robber. Don't And don't let anyone tell you Bing. different. When they start Bing. spamming, ah, you know, you can just hold on to your... Re Shut up. Shut up. Bing, Shut bing. Up. <laughs> bing, bing, boo -boo. Look at Bugs in the chat. Boom. Stripe is very fun. Yeah, I know you think that. Yo, get the Discord in here, man. Yo. <laughs> I love that character, bro. You, no, I think, he's, he's, uh, he's a cool character. I played one and I got robbed at like I think I was at like five damage, and I got bing banged out of my resources, and I died like downward. I was like, "Yo, man, what the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, let me save my options so he can just keep hitting me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> I like the gun though. I think the gun is great. Honestly, I think the gun is great. Uh, I want to see how Black Adam do. does. Hey, relax, man. All right. <laughs> I, I hope. Um, I, well, I want to see how Black Adam does, though, in uh, the tournament setting. Online, land, doesn't really matter. You know, we got Apex coming up, which has singles, actually, offline singles for multiverses. So if you're going to that, of course, best of luck. I'll be watching that tournament, hoping to see some awesome singles action. I actually want to see a Black Adam make top eight. Will it happen? I don't know. Yeah, I mean the right player has to do it, right? That's what it comes down to. Like you put the character in the right hands, but that's for any game. Like it's just yeah. you're running a mill. Average player might not be able to do it on like a high level. But of course, like, you know for those tournaments like Make It Rain Dog or any of those kind of qualifiers that uh, player first game does officially. Like you know, I could see like an elite player doing that shit, like Void. Even though you know getting Void to compete these days is tough, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. priorities, yeah. priorities. It's it's going to be a hard one, man, honestly. I think the character in itself um, has capabilities in ones, but I think it's just going to take a little bit of time because, yeah, he does have a very awkward neutral. Um, that being said, like I said before, I, I do think the character is pretty strong. The character is funny because like he has that mo Superman like movement, right? But a lot of his just general like actual attacks, right, um, don't play into it as much. So he just kind of bobs and weaves around people. And then if he catches you lacking, obviously, like I said before, like either if it's like a dash up and he gets you with the jab combos or um, then from there, he can go through his like his down attack, go into a grab, right um, down, throw them, go from there. Right. And they can kind of set up his stuff, you know, um, but he's he's got conversions, man. He's got some really, really good conversions. Some of them are short and they're good for like twos. Um, and then some of them are kind of longer. Right. And you get some of these advanced combos and he, he can do like. Um, they're like somewhat reliable, and it's like he can get like forty nine, like to like fifty, like damage, right? Yeah. Uh, so the character has options. He has some tools to, uh, to just burn you really, really early. Um, not like a Superman early on a mix up, or like a Stripe early on a mix up, but just strong, like a strong combo that, like, oh, I found you at uh, you're at forty percent, or you're at fifty percent. And if I have lightning on deck, I do it like I combo you, do my up attack, bring you back down. That's enough time for me to get you with a charge attack, and like you could just off the side. And that's a real combo. You just got to hold that, right? So, bro, I need man, a character solid. I need a black Adam with a do rag uh, variant. 
Oh, free. I need to black Adam. Can we get Adam. that? Can That's we, what I need. Can we can get, get black, black Adam with a do-rag, please? I please? need that shit to be silk and pristine also, bro. This is this is why y'all don't need to be in control of nothing. Yo, I need, <laughs> yo, I need the straight <laughs> African Adam. Give me. Don't just give him a tongue with some ribs in no, it. No, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I need him with a do rag, uh, man. I, 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 get, I need him. No, I need him yo, straight from Africa. Give I get, me that right. Now. I give stripe a do rag if I could. I promise you that and Gizmo. Of course you would. I would. Yeah, I would cool. do. Gizzy, do Gizzy. I would definitely do get it. Get out of here, man. Yeah, do rag bundle. Reset. Yo, do rag bundle, bro. <laughs> First thing in the shop, bro. Yo, I actually um. Rest in peace to Gizmo. I don't see that character picked anymore at all. That's my goat too. So it makes me sad. He was a fun pick, but he wasn't a competitive pick. Bruh, he got nerfed, nerfed, bro. They straight up, they they picked his little ass up and smacked him, bro. Come on, yeah, bro. Bring, bring him back. Kind of a wall. Bring him I back, I would like bro. to see him um, utilize more. I, I'd like that the character would be a bit more strong. Bring back Bugs. Um, I mean, I would just Yo. like to see that character in twos do something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Gizmo's concept of actually, like, being a backpack on the character is, like, it's a really cool concept, right? And it, But... That and I mean honestly, even Iron Giant, when you have like someone can go inside Iron Giant and like just like battle people too, those two concepts have not been uh they haven't been flourishing. Like they're uh -huh. they're not that good, right? Like so I would like to see something where it's like, okay, hey, we, we combine together, we join forces, literally, uh, and it's like a two v one situation. I would like to see those characters be a bit stronger in that way, where it's to a point where you have to, like, you almost want to avoid them being close to each other to be able to use that option, right? For sure. Um, right now, it's not that way at all, um, and that's going to be a hard one to balance. But I wish Gizmo, like that, that whole concept was actually like good enough to be valuable, but it's yeah. not. That character does get trashed. Yeah, there's a bunch of interesting ways you could go about it, right? It's almost, I mean, if, if you compare it to other platform fighters where you want to implement the divide and conquer strategy, like Ice Climbers is the first thing that comes to mind, where when both of them are together and doing their strategy, they're really strong, and then you split them up. Maybe you could make it like a cooldown thing where, like, yeah. uh, it's a cooldown and you, you know, join together, but it only lasts X amount of time and then there's a cooldown and then the next time they could join together, you're trying to prevent that as the other team. So you're trying to keep them split apart from each other and stuff like that. So for sure, maybe something along those lines, but it would be a interesting concept. And, and I think that's the greatest thing about multiverses is when you have a two V two as the main focus, there's a lot of different concepts you can implement, right? Yeah. So my next question is, What's your rank? Dang, man. You're just I'm just out? I'm just calling it out right now. What's your rank? Coming out with the questions. What's your rank, bro? So sure, me sure. and me and Bam haven't get, gotten to grind that much. I think we got to like almost gold. I don't know if we're gold yet. I think we're still silver. Ah, uh, you guys yeah. will, you guys will definitely make it to gold. I'll tell you that. You'll make it to gold. Now, how long it'll yeah. take? I can't tell you. I'm finding, um, and I don't know if people will agree with this, right? So, rank dropped. Exciting time because everybody wants ranked. It's a rank alpha, too. So, I'm guessing, like, once this is said and done, right, everything will reset and then the official rank will come out. However, however it'll mm -hmm. work after we give our feedback and there's improvements and stuff. But I've found that uh, the, the consistency in gaining RP has been a little weird. Sometimes I'll play a match. I'll get maybe, like, 13 or something. But then I play a bunch of other matches, like, four, three. Too. And it's making the climb out of like silver very, very long. And so I want to know if anybody yeah, else has had that. Yeah, I'm silver three, bro. Like, I'm just, even with the oh, winning, I'm, I'm still like, silver two. no, don't Hell feel yeah. bad. I'm saying, don't yeah. feel bad. See, I was just we asking were, you what. You like thought like I was throwing shade, bro. I was just <laughs> asking mind. your rank yeah. just to <laughs> ask, bro. <laughs> That's OD. Wait, wait, Phil, didn't you get gold last night? I don't feel Oh, right hell no. Yeah, once again, yeah. I find myself just better than the cat. I know. I'm sick of this shit. That's tough, bro. Yeah, we, 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 we definitely played literally like how long do we play like two hours max two hours about, yeah like about two hours and then we just got to uh two and then we just nope <laughs> i'm a silver three one god one bro silver, well, you, well, silver you three know, god it, bro i wonder if i mean i'm assuming your mmr has to deal with, do with it too right because some of the people me and bam were playing i was just like oh snap like 
sheesh. Like they, they weren't that great. And then I'm watching you and Void play ranked. I'm like, man, they're playing some really good players. Like, I I don't know. That, that's just like from my observation. I saw. Yeah. I, I'm assuming it has to do with your MMR before going into ranked. And I think it, it's got to have some kind of correlation. I'm just guessing that, but I don't know. Yeah, for sure. I, I, uh, I'm like happy it's here. And of course I think everybody's going to be able to get the, uh, I think it's play 15 matches to get that icon. Like everybody's going to have that at some point, but it's just like, uh, I'm hoping going forward with rank mode that there is a change to how much RP you gain. Like, uh, if I'm thinking of League of Legends, and you could correct me if I'm wrong about this, Charles, to my memory, because I haven't played uh, ranked League in a while, uh, if you win, depending on, like, your win streak, you get even more uh, points, right? But if you're, like, losing a lot, then you get, like, a little bit, I'm assuming? Like, was it that how it was before or no? Yeah, I... I the it's last been a hot played, minute, bro. <laughs> yeah, last time I played serious. League of Legends ranked was like season four. I played very seriously from seasons two to four, and then kind of casual from there. Just I would just yeah. get gold every season just for the rewards and stuff. Uh huh. Uh, but it, it's it's weird because this game, when you compare it to something like League ranked, right? It's like what are the ranking of all of the other players involved, which is still going to be like the same with multiverses. But of course. multiverses has a best of three system. So like, do you get more? RP if you 2 owe someone rather than uh -huh. someone. I think that right? should definitely be a thing. That should be a thing, right? Because if it, you know, if you lost one two, but it was close, you know, what I'm saying like it was close though, right? Like, uh -huh. it, was, it was at least game three you took a game, so it, sh it should yeah. nullify that to a certain point. So yeah, I actually thought that, that was already is, uh, in there, but yeah, I think well, that'll be I, like I said. I don't know if that's yeah. it. I'm assuming that is that is uh, the case. I think that should definitely be a thing. Like if it's 2-0, you get more points. If it's 2-1, you still go positive, but you get, uh, you know, like less points. I think uh, being able to have a form of, I want to say performance, like say you're solo queuing and you lose, but you were putting in mad work. You made it close, blah, blah, blah. There's a way to track that sort of thing. So you don't get hard punish just because the other guy was running off the stage three times. Like that would be really nice because that would, that would make people more, I want to say willing to commit to the grind as long as like they aren't getting punished for doing well, despite the odds stacked against them. Because when you're, I want to say solo queuing and you're not queued with someone and you're not in comms with them, right? But then you go against a team with comms, you're at a disadvantage unless you're just that yeah. much better, you know? So yeah, I think that would be something that could help people. I think performance definitely should be taken into account. Uh, the double characters, not a fan at all. Not a fan. That's, that's, that's just, I understand like, okay, out the gate, we're going to just do it just for like, not just the competitive scene, maybe the casual scene, but I think just setting the tempo and the tone early that we don't permit double characters is is should have been the way to go. Like you, you can't do that in bracket. Of, you can't even do it in like yeah. serious competition. Right? Yeah, I yeah. I think that needs to go 100. Uh, percent I mean, I know weird. there's uh, even I remember back when we did uh, a couple of our first events. I remember even Tony even uh, talking about that and really kind of asking if that should be a thing or not. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I 100 percent think that needs to go. I don't think that needs to be in ranked. Um, like it, like Peter was saying in chat, 100 percent. Like when you are doing ranked, ranked should be as close to what a standardized tournament rule set should look like, and anything 100%. outside of that should be silly. Like you have regular queue that people have now. You have silly queue now, right? So yep. you have enough options for these people. If they want to do that fun stuff, go ahead and do that fun stuff. But you know, this is this is for the sweats, right? This is for the people who are trying to go for the grind. Go hard, go home, and I think that needs to reflect that, especially you now that you have these players. other cues that people can do stuff in. Before, yeah. there was a problem because you didn't have any of those modes, but now you do, right? So now you can hyper-focus this on being competitive, and then the other stuff, you want to run around and, and, and fight freaking Turbo Iron Giant? Go ahead, buddy. Do whatever you want. You want to throw iron in the sky? Cool. That's great. I don't care. I, like You can do that over there. Over here is game time. That's it's where I'll business. be. Uh, you find me in Silly Q. Yeah. Fuck all that competition shit. Find me in Silly Q. That's my new home. Yeah, yeah. You go guys ahead, go sweat. You guys go be oily and shit. Bang, bang, bro, boom, stay boom. out of yes, my Silly Q, bro. For real, for real. I'm gonna host a Silly Q tournament. I love that mode. But no, of course, no, you're it's totally it's right. Mode. You're totally, totally, totally right. And uh, something else to bring up in regards to rank mode, and something I definitely think should be implemented. Right. Uh, I think we need some picks and bands. And what I'm talking, not picks and bands, sorry. I think we need bands on stages, rather. I think that there should be a way to ban that stages. Nice. The only, the argument against that is 
people don't want the match to take longer, aka like yes. the menu before the match. You know what I mean? But man, if I'm putting everything on the line, my RP and if rank mode is gonna matter a lot, like you get opportunities off of being X rank, blah blah blah. I need to be able to get rid of Tree Fort and Scooby Doo. If I don't want to play on those stages, I should be able to get rid of them, bro. I think at the very least, at the very very least, you should be able. To, if you lost a game, you should be able to pick the match the next game is on. At the very least, for sure. And yeah. for bands, I feel like bands are pretty easy. Instead of making the bands like in the game where like in the middle of the match you can have uh you can set up your bands like oh i'm going about to play ranked what are the what are the stages you you get one stage smart band, very your smart partner yeah. gets one stage band right and you just set it so like your opponent wouldn't be able to pick those stages or say fuck it it's just randomized like you know for sure you're not going to be playing on those stages yeah and very i think smart. that's fine I think that is fine, right? And you right? can also it, set preferred stages too. Right. So say it, you get to set one preferred and one, um, one band. So it's an automated system where it's like, oh, okay, you just lost. Your team will play on a, their one of their preferred stages. But then it gets a little tricky because if there's two preferred stages, and those two match up with your opponent's two band stages, then what happens? Then at, maybe after that, it's a randomized stage. After that, but I think there's a way where you can streamline it to be like 80 to 90% like a tournament experience, where in a tournament experience, it's going to be way more dynamic, where it's happening live, right? But if you still want to have it that in-between of like very convenient, very quick, you can have a system like that. Yeah, I think you should have preferred, just the same as like I do think um, now that we have like names in land, right? We can put names and do this stuff there. Like you should have preferred things out the gate. Um, I think that... Right now, honestly, uh, I think when it comes to perks and all that stuff too, people were talking about it, and I think it's the biggest thing. There is a huge out-of-game, like, uh, a lot of time lost in this game, right? A lot of times there's more time me sitting around and picking things than actually playing the game. So I, I think that if you add this stuff to that timer too as well, I think that's okay. Like, I think, okay, you can go ahead, have your preferred, also have the option when you're going through your perks if you want to select that uh, preferred, go ahead. But I think it should all be under that one timer. So no matter what, it's like when they get when it counts down, you are in the game because you don't want to add a whole different segment and then you have to go ahead and play and it's like an extra additional thirty seconds. Like hell no, that needs to go right yeah. because uh, to the point that everyone's talking about, there's too much time spent outside of this game than actually playing the game. So. Yeah, I agree with what Charles says for sure. Having preferred stages would be great. Um, having it kind of auto-determined for the most part would be awesome too. And then it's like if someone goes ahead and picks the match, it, like they go ahead and pick the stages, that time limit should be under the same one the perks is done. So you're not adding additional time to overall queuing up. I think you do those things and you find yourself a much more enjoyable experience. It feels a lot more fair to people when they're playing and they go from there. Yo, I have a question on, on, on BAM, or BAM, on bands. Like, if this game gets, like, let's say, like, they continue dropping characters and shit like that, is it, like, feasible to say, like, people can, like, ban characters like they do in League? Is like, a feasible thing? That is a feasible thing. In it's my a, it's never could... been done before in fighting games, I'll tell you that. Right, that's why I'm curious. It's never like, been not, done. like, you know, three or four. Like, like, you can just knock out one character, so. Well, I think the more interesting thing is if you make it exactly like uh, MOBA draft picks where there's bands and then there's also like a draft phase where it's like, oh, we pick like we know that Void mains Morty and Black Adam. So we ban Morty and then our team's first pick and we first pick Black Adam. So and you set it up so it's like in MOBA draft picking one t only the character can't be used on multiple teams. So if Black Adam's locked in on one team, then like that's it. That's the only team that can use Black Adam, right? So I don't know if they're gonna go down that path because when you go down that path, I think it's it's like weird because there's there's pros and cons, right? The the pros is every character on the screen will be different, so I think that's fun to watch. But then at the same time, I, it just feels weird in fighting games because it's never been done before, right? Like I yeah. I'm so used to watching mirrors right of like just two characters on the same screen duking it out and then same goes for doubles so uh it's it would definitely be 
a risk because that's something that a fighting game has never done before. Could they do it at the rate in which char- like they're bringing out characters? Absolutely. And I, w- in terms I want of them the to do it. Potential to do it I'll because explain. of how big this IP is. You know what I mean? I want- down the line, mm-hmm. I could see that working, man. Down the line, but again, like to Charles' point, like, dude, you need to have a lot of champions. And again, we have to recognize too that when you're playing, like, obviously, league characters between them, they have different nuances. Um, and this could be me just talking out of my ass because I don't know league as much as say like Charles or anyone else, but I just feel like there's a lot more nuances that people have to deal with with the different characters in a fighting game. Um, I think in terms of like the the movement stuff, I think like in terms of like the weights, all those kind of things. Like um, obviously they're you know of course they're tax obviously, but I mean like that's the kind of universal. But we have technically more tax, all those kind of things. Um, so it's like you get into a situation where. Most people are going to be a quote unquote like one trick, right? Like uh, in in league, it's like okay, there's more people where like you have this set, you have this certain amount of characters, right, that you play on. But even everyone still has like a focus. So I don't know. Um, I think that once we get there, it can be that way. But even then, at that point, it feels kind of weird if you like. All right, we've been playing where I can play my main character this whole time. And also now we hit 300 characters in multiverses. And now we, now someone can ban my character. That just feels weird. Right. Well, yeah, if we're waiting until um, we get to 300, <laughs> I almost feel like it's pointless at that point. Like, yeah. Right. So, so it's like <laughs> my, my, yeah, my thing on this, I made a video on this too. Uh, if this happened, I would either want it to be tested for half a season or I would want it to be its own separate mode for testing. So therefore, you keep the standard ranked mode that we have where no characters yes. can be banned. But then you have also another option for people to try out just to get a taste and feel for it. You, uh, and Unfortunately, you're going to isolate people that are solo mains, right? But then when you look at League of Legends, which is an entirely different kind of game, right? There are still one tricks in League of Legends, <laughs> but once their character gets banned, they just become useless, right? And that's a testament to your skill in League of Legends because it's not just about how good you are with one character. You being good at League of Legends means you can play literally like different characters, like multiple different characters, blah, blah, blah. So if they're oh, yeah. trying it's like literally to impossible to ban faker out exactly like right, right. exactly it's literally like you can throw you cannot all ban him out at faker you can't ban him out because he plays so many characters right yeah. but do we want Ooh. that in a fighting game though do we want that that i think that's my question because i mean honestly i like to see the best people play their best character personally right um, I love to see the magic they can do with that. But also, of course, there's another skill that's involved with um, being able to play a multitude of characters. And I'm they're all at this certain level that no matter what, I'm that damn good. So I I don't know. I, I, I don't know like if I really want that or not, like personally. But um, that it, it all depends on what we're really trying to test here. Because some people may say, I don't care that you can play. There's there's definitely a lot of people, like, even perfect example in other fighting games, right? There's certain people who can play, like, virtually every character at a high level, right? But if they're not, like, the best, right? They're not even, some of them are not even close to being the best uh, player in that game. But all of a sudden you do that now, you change everything. So we have to be cognizant of that. It is a big change. Uh, I agree with you. It's very big change. It's a big change. But at the same time, if the game is trying to promote diversity and and character picks, then I could see it going down that road and basically trying to force or enable players to learn the game by learning multiple characters. That way there's more variety. So to me, with this topic, there are pros and cons definitely for both. If we just stuck to what we have right now for the entirety of the game, I wouldn't bat an eye. I wouldn't care. But I won't lie and say that I'm not interested to see what multiverses would look like with pick, uh, picks and bands when there's like about 80 to 100 characters in the game, right? I think experimentation's good. I think it's good to keep the game fresh. Like, I understand, obviously, like, it, it can hurt some people who are just solo mains. But at the same time, like, I think stagnation can be a game's, like, worst enemy. So I think just being comfortable to try new things doesn't mean it has to be a permanent fix or a permanent, um, you know, mainstay. But shit, I mean, you know, we got some options here. Why not experiment a little bit? I think it'd be I just think it'd be cool. I just think it'd be cool. They seem like they have a willingness to, like, try a bunch of goofy shit. So I I think the important thing to think about is, I mean, so far from this conversation, I've kind of picked up like longevity is probably the biggest pro of this right like kind of just breaking down the pros and cons Mm -hmm. most of the time player bases don't like drastic changes especially when it involves nerfing themselves 
right? Yes. Like let, let's like yeah. let's look at the, the eyes of a competitor. Like you put X amount of times these characters, and all of a sudden, like say we're three years into the game or two years into the game, it's all of a sudden it's like oh yeah, like with one ban or someone else can pick your character. All of that time just went to shit. I think early experimentation is key to kind of like meet that middle ground because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you can't not please 100% of the community. Nope. It's just not how things are. Every human's different. Everyone's going to have different preferences and stuff. But if if the justification is for the longevity of competitive play and you start things off like, oh, hey, we're going to start draft picking with no bans, but like draft picking is going to be a thing. So you this team will have first pick. Next team can pick their team. And then the first pick team gets to the last pick. But you can essentially ban a ban a character by picking it right instead of having bans or whatever so almost kind of like imp implementing the draft pick and if everyone like ultra hates it for a season or half a season or whatnot then you either can the idea or you, but i i think i think early experimentation is kind of key for something like this and getting the results or getting the feedback earlier than then because the longer you wait and then you do a drastic change just from what I've seen, it's like it, it's so hard to do a drastic pivot when you know, a game is really developed or you know players have gotten their hands on it for so long. So that that is that is my viewpoint on this whole like draft and ban, and it's a it's an interesting topic because no other fighting game is like really willing to do that. And I think this game you can only do that because it's a team focused game, right? Yeah. Because you're bringing in the two v two aspect, it you you can kind of take some ideas or take some ways of doing things from other team games like MOBAs or you know even like j just a bunch of other team games essentially. Yeah, I, I like it, man. I I'm getting a little hyped. I kind of want to see it in its own <laughs> mode. I want to see it in its own mode. Like it's separate thing. Let people test it. Let people try it. It's easy to say I hate this without trying it. Like just oh try for it. sure, man. And I, I mean, and I do think this is one big thing, right? Like uh, to Charles' point, this is a team-centered game, right? It's focused on teams, and I think that as we start to get more like strong, like team tactics, right, and m maneuver around here, then I think the idea of seeing that is really cool, right? Because then you kind of have these more macro team things as to why I'm going to pick certain characters, anyways, and I think that's cool, right? And I think that's the thing you're testing now, right? Not just someone's skill and how they pilot this character in that way, but all these, also these like macro level team strategies that uh, you want to implement when you're going up against people. And I think that's like something that's really beautiful, right? In uh, what you're looking at in terms of like, if you're looking at league or some of these other team games, right? Where it's like these people are able to like sit down and be like, okay, they're going to remove this piece away from my, my toolkit that piece is my maybe my strongest piece, whatever. So how am I going to take what I have now and build out a macro like strategy to uh, to beat my uh, opponent with my teammates? I think that that's like testing that particular skill is really really cool. So um, yeah, I would I would love to see that in another uh, mode like you were talking about before and just start hammering it. But I do think that if that's going to happen, that needs to be a mode that is done early. I don't think that's something that you wait for a while and then kind of push it on people and then hope it's going to stick because it won't. It needs to be something that people already are coming into the mind frame of like, hey, I'm playing this game now, like kind of more like now, now it's not me. I have my character and I'm looking at my toolkit only in the sole aspect of my character. Now I'm looking at it where I am the player and these these characters represent my toolkit and pieces of things that I can take to build up a strategy against my opponent, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just like a that's clearly a paradigm shift um, from what it is when you just pick your one character that's your one main and you're represented through that character. Yeah, I think like and and it's true like you know, doing it now, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. Like, doing it earlier rather than later is definitely a W. Separating it by mode and then just, like, giving people an opportunity to really just explore. Because, again, there's so much theory crafting we can do, like, regards, like, to modes and rule sets and ish like that. And given the game is literally still being developed and, re you know, taken down and rebuilt and stuff before our very eyes, like, you know, you don't wait until, like, a couple years out. You kind of just test a lot of shit now get feedback and then go from there so yeah i don't know it's just it's just good food for thought and a good topic in general so that's kind of yeah kinda like and hey it's other like it's other content at the very least if it's not something that sticks 
it's other content that you have so people can play the Absolutely. game. Absolutely. And I think that's something that they've been pretty good about right now. Like, it seems like they're just kind of hitting it hard. Let's have a test mode of ranked. They know it's a test, so people are upset. Whatever. It's a test. Just go through it. Cool. We have Silly Q. Great. We have more content now in this game. This is something that um, had that was a big problem that needed to be addressed from the onset of the open beta because the truth of the matter is we already know how games are these days. Most of the time people say they're in open beta from a consumer standpoint, the game is out that we, we, that we don't listen to, Oh, well, it's a beta. So we're going to justify all these things not working or this content not being there. Right? You can't really do that. And so I love that the team recognized that starts, started to push out this content and it's great. And I think this would be another Avenue aspect of that at the very least you know, and then at best becomes maybe our main mode of playing this game. So uh, I love it all around. So with all of this, right, and all this fixing and testing, let's talk about the netcode improvements. Netcode has been improved. Uh, after yeah, long cries of the community asking for netcode changes, I, I, and I had full faith that was going to happen. You know, when you are, so I had this instance where I uh, ran into a troll. Uh, what's his name? Giraffe. Yeah, he know who he is. I ran into this guy. He's been trolling me Dang. for like like two months, bro, on Twitter. Ran into him with Oops Tier. I, I look at Oops Tier virtually, of Does course. Giraffe have a check mark? I'm like, bro, I hope not. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Oops Tier. Our check lives marks, are on the line with this match. We got to win. Mark. And so we lost because I died at zero. I got dragged into the blast zone at zero. It was like getting rollbacked, right? And at that moment, I was like, you know, it, it hurts when it happens, but at the same time, yeah, yes, Key. But at the same time, it's just like, all right, it is what it is. I know this is going to be fixed. Like, with other games that I won't mention, I know that it's not going to get fixed. There's nothing to look forward to. I know I'm screwed forever. But with this game, I know eventually, I don't know when, but eventually it will get fixed up. So I always had this thought in the back of my head. Why are people yelling about ranked mode not being out yet, but you're upset about the connection why are you rushing into ranked if you're not happy about the connection strength so the correlation with that never made sense to me at all it's like i would much rather ranked come out season two season three as long as it means that the connection is going to be stable buttermilk there's your answer crisp beautiful there's your answer like period so yeah that's Anyway, but netcode improvements, how do you guys feel about them? How Have you felt them, you know, at all? I, so I love it simply for the fact that my timeline is just full of so much less bitching. I mean, I love it. You know, like, hey, I got screwed out of a tournament because X, Y, and Z. No, you can actually play. You're getting green bars everywhere. It's it's beautiful to see such positivity on the timeline now. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like, I follow, like, a, a good amount of multiverse players because I think they're sick. And I'm I'm glad to see they're able to kind of feel like they're getting their peak performances online as well, not yeah. just having to go to land and do it. Yeah, man, it's it's nice. Uh, it looks good. Uh, part of partly, yeah, what EE e said, man. I'm getting less bitching on my timeline, which is a whole another conversation, man. <laughs> Community, please, like, <laughs> I ain't gonna bro, say nothing. I'm not gonna say nothing. Solutions? No, I'm gonna speak my piece, man. Because I'm tired of people <laughs> bitching day in and day out, man. It is actually wild and you're you guys are, i'm not saying you can't speak 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 what's going on be about it but man people are getting a little too emotional on the timeline and best believe you're shooting yourselves in the foot so i'm just gonna say it like it is man you know what i mean like <laughs> we we've been around in enough we have yes i can say you bugs i can yes of course you already know <laughs> you already know, <laughs> you already know. Well, i'm not talking about just you it's not just you because if it's just you that'd be a problem it, it's not just you there's more people. You're one of them. You definitely come on my timeline <laughs> too much. But there's a lot. There's a lot of people, right? <laughs> but, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, solutions, right? We're looking at solutions. And bugs, to be fair, a lot of things you say are true. Netcode needs to be addressed, right? Been talking about this since day one. You don't have to say it 20 billion times. You don't have to say it every day, 8 a.m., you know, P-A-T, like, uh, P.M., you know, tweet. yeah, scheduled tweet. I know you have the tweet deck, right? You know what I'm saying? You don't have to say it all the time. I think we get it after the 80 times, but it is it's something that definitely needed to happen, right? So um, I I'm glad that the devs are listening there. I'm glad that we're getting these changes. I do want to see some more positivity coming out of the scene, but I that does not mean that we disregard things that need to get fixed, right? Um, 
And oh hell yes. yeah, I be- absolutely it's convenient. Yo, do you know how many people yes. will blame a matchup or some out oh, some free, out, uh, free. some some other thing on why they lost? It's never damn. I need yes. to improve at this matchup. It's never oh man, I need to help never. my partner or I, 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 me and my partner need to get better. It's always oh it's the rollback, it's the connection, it's the matchup. Nerf this, buff this. It's like bro, at the when 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 does it yeah. become? You win. Yes. And so, nah, hold on, Bam. I've had people try to throw that in my face when I'm talking about, well, you're always saying that Velma's overpowered and Bugs Bunny is this and that. It's like, but I beat them. Talk to them. I still beat them. Like, Talk to them. <laughs> it, it would no. be one thing if I was just taking Talk L's left and right to those characters, but I'm still whooping their ass. So what are you trying to tell me? Like, I don't understand. I, I'm at least going to, I'm going to say my piece and I'm going to work, period. I'm going to work on what needs to be worked on. And I right. mean- even when it's not me, most of the community will say Velma is a problem. But when I say it, it's like, oh, there he goes again, talking about Velma. <laughs> it's like, yo, what? Hey, man, when I see a character that's charactering, I got to talk about it. But regardless, yo, it's just like, yeah, wait, what? I see someone complain about Morty Nades when he walked into six of them. It's never that's their fault. Saying, it's man. never their fault. It's, never their fault. it's Morty's fault. Is- not your fault it's for walking slip- into it. Yep, it's a slippery slope, man. It's a slippery slope, right? And we got to recognize, all right, control the things you can and accept the things you can't, right? Say something about it if something's actually generally wrong. But trust me, man, there's so many times I see people like, oh, my gosh, I got hit here. Yeah, you extended a limb and you got hit. Yo. That's what we. That's a fighting game. Welcome to fighting game. Wait, you're a Superman there's player. You're a Superman player. Yeah. So one there's, thing there's to your player. defense, bro. To your defense as a Superman player, uh, there would be the Superman players that would sit at the side of the ledge and they would just go for the up grab over and over, right? And so that got nerfed. I thought that was a healthy nerf because that was just degenerate to look at a Superman player just do that over and over and over and over. And then the lower skill player base, they're gonna keep getting grabbed by it, right? But now the thing is, is that. Wouldn't your brain tell you, I'm just not going to mess with that. Let's go jump his partner while he does that. Jump his partner while he does that. But people aren't thinking of solutions. Dude, people don't think of solutions. They think of, I need this removed immediately, bro. What, what, What character? Oh, my God. What happened? Right. When new characters come out, aside from Black Adam, within the first, I'm not trolling, by the way. I've been timing this in my chats when I go live. Within the first 10 minutes of a character drop, maybe even lower, someone is asking for the new character to get nerfed immediately. The character hasn't even breathed. We gotta nerf it. And I'm just like, bro, you know what, man? I'm so used to Smash and complaining about nerfs and buffs. I'm so happy that... Actually, you know what? Let me not say I'm happy the patches are over because we could use some more. But when it comes to like this game, I feel like it's always going to be a theme because there will always be balance patches. And because of that... People will always think that the next quick fix is going to make them into a superstar. But that's just yeah. not how it works. Y'all, what yeah. y'all think? Y'all playing Bale or Steve? Nah, bro. Come on, man. No, y'all nah, done it's it. working right here, bro. <laughs> yeah. But on the, same, on the same coin, though, I feel like I, there, there's another side of the coin to this because as, you know, game developers, something like the Superman nurse, I understand. Do I think it on paper needed to get nerfed? I mean... Not really, like... You're like me. I, I never found an issue with that because, like I said, I don't play the Superman game. I don't fuck with that. Like, why would I do that when you can just... That's an easy 2v1. Go ahead, hug the wall all you want. Hugging that wall ain't gonna get you a stock. I'm gonna go 2v1 your partner over here and then you're just gonna be an eyewitness, right? So, like, there's easy, clear counterplay. Just like old old Taz Tornado. Like, Alpha, Alpha Taz Tornado, I remember just playing Finn and on reaction just jabbing it. Thank Every you. Single time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, but but but. But you understand why it got nerfed. I understand why it got nerfed because not everyone has the same amount of experience that I do or others do in like platform fighters or fighting games in general, right? So when a newcomer comes in, if they're just getting jammed by what seems like a very yep. brain dead strategy because they don't have the experience, you also have to cater to that audience because yep. that audience is the, the most of your player of your base. Player base. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, exactly. like, you know, we do say all this stuff about patch culture, but at the same time, it's like, it's the other side of the coin where we have to please that audience because that audience is the majority of the player base, if that makes yeah. sense. So there, there is definitely two sides of the coin. I, I agree for sure. 
And th- but there are things that are just too degenerate. But like, you have to also I've, make sure. Seen, mm-hmm. No, keep going, keep going. But I, I've seen streams where it's like two Tazes only press NATO in close alpha and they win. Free win. You know what I'm that's a like, free I've, win. I've, 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 <laughs> For I've me. seen that happen. And like <laughs> that's it's free. That's a little. That's a little absurd. <laughs> That's a little that strange. shit was funny, bro. That was funny to watch, wild. bro. But that, yeah, it's really that, funny. I, it's really it, funny. It was hilarious. It was hilarious. I, I love that, dude. With the balancing, just, though, you got to also make sure that you're not alienating top players, though. And I think PFG specifically does a great job of not alienating top players, too, because even though they are the, I want to say, lesser part of your game's demographic. You still don't want to disclude them, you know what I mean? Like at all, also because the most seen part of your yes, right? yes, they're they're, the they're pretty much that, almost yes. the advertisement for your game. Because when people are, are watching tournaments, people market. are getting hyped and watching these events or traveling yes. to these events for either the chance to watch, meet, or play against your best players. So yeah. if you don't give them equal opportunity, or of course if you don't also cater balancing around them too, then of course it becomes a problem. But it's all f- about finding that happy medium, right? And I think Taz Tornado was, I want to say, a good part of that happy medium because I think that anybody that's really good at the game probably did not have an issue with that at all. It, like, if two Tazes got into a lobby with me and Void, I would just say, all right, free MMR, oh, right. free him up, yeah. see ya. But then, like, to the next guy that isn't as skilled or whatever, that might make them quit. So with them nerfing the Tornado, I look at it as, Poor Taz, that sucks. I feel bad for the Taz mains. But like, if I mained Taz, it would be, I feel like a much different story too. Like if I was a top Taz player, right? That would probably irk the shit out of me, you know? Or imagine Wonder Woman, for instance. Imagine Wonder Woman was like, I don't know. She had some degenerate thing like Taz Tornado and you could just do double Wonder Woman and just have a blast, right? And then she Mm -hmm. got nerfed off of that. It's easy for me to talk about Taz in this vein because I'm not a Taz main, but as a Wonder Woman player, I would be so annoyed. I'd be really, really annoyed. Even if I have to accept that it made sense why it had to happen, it would still bother me to a degree. Of course, absolutely, especially on the top level because you are playing against people who know how to get beat that skill check to a certain extent, right? And then you're playing the real game, so to speak, quote unquote. So, I mean, that was the thing. Um, And I, I do think that uh, PFG has gotten a lot better in understanding the happy medium between the two. Because like you said, we we all understand that top players are going to be the minority. However, they make up the quote unquote, majority of the viewership, right? Of what you're going to see, of the lens of the game. And through that marketing, you have to also acknowledge them at the same time. Make sure that you have the game in a good position where the install base can come in and really grow with your game, rather than them just getting "quote unquote" randomed out from their like point of view because they don't get a t- enough time to play the game. They already just got bodied, right? So um, I think they're in a better space there. I do like the fact that uh, at least Reslev came out and said that he's going to start looking more at some of the bug fixes, yeah, um, and the hit boxes. Those are the biggest things to me that's bothered me about this game. If there's anything that's bothered me about this game right now, um, you in fought the Finn yet? Set, it's a huh? You fought Finn yet? Of course, I fought Finn. Are you kidding me, son? Let me tell. Let me show Shout you something. Out to Finn Dare, I just want to show you something. Oh, you can't Finn see my hands back. right now, Sally, it. bro, bro. Finn, Finn did. Um, I think it's the upswing one, right, where he swings his sword up before he ch- like chops you downward, bro. Yeah, I yeah, swear yeah, to God, bro. Him. I think I was like two and a half character links away from Finn. Dude. I don't want to blame rollback, bro. The shit still hit me, bro. I'm so I'm trying to understand. My man has a teleport, uh, so his disadvantage almost doesn't exist. He has like true blender combos. The suck you in hitbox to, to spike you. And, yo, I was downplaying the fuck out of Finn. I'm not going to lie. My last little tier list, I thought Finn was good, but I didn't think he was good, good. Bro, Finn is wild. I ran into a Finn in ranked, and I just started to think about, like, I, I, I asked myself, who am I? <laughs> As I was playing, I'm, I'm just shocked. I couldn't that, even, I wasn't even happy. How bro. did you not know? It's I just didn't, tight I, that you I, didn't I, know I this. Didn't know. How did you not know this? I just this? didn't know, you, you, bro. Nigga, you know. know, you play too many platform fighters <laughs> to see know. a character move that fast <laughs> with those kind of hitboxes, a big ass sword, <laughs> and not realize this character is busted. That sword what? is skinny. You don't understand why it's that big, bro. This shit is that skinny, man. character makes no sense. Why is he moving that way? Oh, it's tight, crazy bro. too because his hitbox, if his hitboxes are <laughs> accurately portrayed, he would still be wild. Shit. It's like it's sword, and then he's got an invisible sword that's like three characters length. That character is nonsense. 
The, oh, these tight, hip, I'm, bro. Like I said, dude, but going back to it, dude, I'm Can we right talk now, about the kick? <laughs> bro, the kick? Bro, the, why does the kick got more range than the sword, bro? <laughs> why does the kick got more range than the sword? Oh, uh, shit, bro. bro. Ah, uh, shit, your ass up, man. <laughs> Come on, man. That, that, <laughs> that kick, is, that is not canon. I don't know what kind of dulcet, invisible kick he got, but that ain't, ain't working for me, bro. It's a force kick. Yoga, get your ass out of here. How about that? That is pissing me off, man. I, I, that is getting me tight. Uh, Finn oh, Finn is balanced. Gosh. He's just annoying. Time here. I'm about to ban you, bro. I'm about to ban yeah. <laughs> Dang. Imagine getting banned for cap. Yeah. <laughs> There's straight cap. But, I mean, again, going to I, – I really am happy that they're looking at this because straight up, dude, a lot of these hitboxes in this game, it's not rollback. It's not just a rollback. Like, a lot of the hitboxes just need to be tweaked. Straight up need to be tweaked. And I think that in tandem with rollback, in tandem with different things in the speed of the game, you'll get some very, very weird interactions. And I think that's where um, that's like problematic, right? Where a lot of hitboxes are just disjoint, like greatly disjointed, right? And it's kind of like oh, some of them are almost arbitrary. So I, I think that having that being tweaked, I think that um, taking like dealing with these bug fixes, because there's definitely a lot of characters that have these little like nuanced bug fixes that prevent certain moves from working or the characters like unable to use a special or any kind of things. Right. We've seen this like Steve universe has like a ton of them. Like Steven has a ton of them. And they talk about them all the time. Um, I know there's a couple with Garnet as well too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taz as well. When it comes to like spinning out the anvil and like, he can lose it. Like, and he won't be able to get like a, by net like a chew an anvil anymore right there's just a lot of those different things and i think that it'd be nice for that to be changed i do think that whatever system whatever priority system we have for these hitboxes or if it's just a nature of them just being really disjointed and then others not being as disjointed i think that would be great to just know so people can have some clarity of what's exactly happening even sure. putting that in a tutorial in terms of showing how some of these boxes are so um I would definitely like that. But I think that fixing those things are the big thing. Adding a character on top of this stuff, on top of this stuff, it just makes it very hard. And I want to be at a place where it's like, we have a lot of these bug fixes dealt with. We have a lot of hitboxes that make sense, right? Yeah, you're going to have a little disjoints here and there. That's what happens in fighting games, right? But not to the scale of what we're seeing right now. For sure. You get those things fixed out, then I can get excited about a new character coming in, not freaking about like, man, here come some other bugs. Here come some other issues, and these mm-hmm. still aren't dealt with. And I think that the scene has been vocal about those things, and I think those are big things that that really needs to be taken seriously. Okay. All right, bet. Yeah, and I, I mm-hmm. think that stuff's more important than yes. actual buffs and nerfs. I agree. Like, I, I know buffs and nerfs are important, obviously. The game, it's impossible to balance the game. So you're constantly going to have to, and like the meta's changing. So, you know, I think you can nerf the obviously super crazy overtuned stuff. But the hurtbox accuracy and hitbox accuracy, that's going to piss me off as a player more than, like, just Velma or Bugs. You know, I'm just going to use, like, Velma and Bugs during Evo. That specifically, like, that timeline, Velma and Bugs was probably at their strongest, right? And, like, Bugs, like, inaccurate hitboxes and Bugs pissed me off more than Velma and Bugs did, even though Velma and Bugs were extremely overtuned at that time, right? Yeah. Just for an example. So, it, in my opinion, that should be numero uno priority, even over, like, new characters Good. coming out, nerfs and buffs, like, that. that is the first thing that will probably piss you off as a player. And yes. That and netcode are going to be, uh, to me, like, the backbone of what makes players happy or pissed. Mm-hmm. Yep. 100%. So real quick, a, la- a last little quick topic. Uh, when you just don't feed into those comments, so someone was like, uh, "Why do people keep saying multiverse is dead? Like, what killed the game?" It's like the game's not dead, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's there's people there's people that want attention, so they're going to say that to provoke you. You just have to ignore it, in my opinion. The game is alive. Look at how many people are in here just chatting. Look how many people are active or in chats when a tournament is happening, when a character gets announced, when a character gets dropped. Uh, like, the signs are all still there, and the game is still going to keep getting better and better and better with more additions to the game in terms of modes, characters, etc. It's the same same old dance, same old dance. So, like, there's really nothing to worry about. 
Yeah, man. And I mean, I, I think that obviously you had that big boom that happens in the beginning of the game. That's like the first impression that, that happens. happens all the time. Um, that happens all the time. Um, obviously, there was a there was a drop because of certain things that needed to be adjusted and fixed because of, you know, you're looking at a game that was in still truly beta. Right. And like I talked about before, even though that's our perception, a lot of times most games don't uh, the when they release open beta, essentially they just see it as a game already out fully functioning. Right. Um, so I think for this game, it's been great to see the growth right now and where the game's going. I think that you continue to make these great seasons. I think once you get to a point where you have ranked fully out, like fully fleshed out, these hitboxes fully uh, dealt with, um, the, you get these tweaks, like not these crazy insane patches and buffs and nerfs, but more so like, okay, we've got everyone working kind of how we want intended. We got these bugs dealt with. We've got these uh, hitboxes dealt with. Then... I think that this game has so many, there's so much content they can add in there. And obviously they've been hinting at a lot of stuff too, which is mm-hmm. great. So many incredible characters, right? You have so many insane IPs. So you can just, after once it's like, okay, the game is in the right place. We're good. You can just be like, hey, we're going to release three characters, five characters, whatever it may be. And be like, oh, game time. Let's go season two, season three, whatever it may be. When the game is officially out. And you'll get a boom once again, right? And then people will stick with that because the game's in a place, a good place, right? So I don't uh, fear this game, quote unquote, dying or whatever it may be, right? It's a, in a place right now where it's becoming better and better. Mm-hmm. It's getting fixed. It's getting tweaked. We're seeing more things every day. The servers are looking better every day. We're seeing the content looking better every day. Yeah, once the game is out, like the official game is out and it's in the right spot, like it's going to be sick, man, because it's, it's a fun game out. to play. Yeah, just leveled out. Like, I mean, for God's sakes, like, look how player unknown. Look how PUBG was when it first launched. That's not the same game, but years later, they're still having big tournaments for it. Absolutely, yeah. Things just level out, and that's okay. That's what you want, right? Like, some Mm -hmm. people try it and stick around. Some people Mm -hmm. will try it and not stick around. Some people will try it and they'll play it on and off. And then, like what Bam says, when there's more of a pickup or a boom, they'll be right back on it. Like, it's just it's the natural progression of how a game that's good just develops it doesn't maintain the steady course the whole time exactly it just kind of levels Wherever. out and it'll have its peaks and then it'll have its kind of like you know yep. you know little dips every now and yep. then that's every game like, and the beauty good, of this man. game is uh with the characters that can be added to it and it not being limited to just first party characters all it takes is the right character to come out for someone to just come crawling right back right right back so i wasn't interested yeah. in gizmo love stripe you know what i mean yeah Respect to you, man. We don't got too many Gremlins fans out there that remember, ma. I'm a super Gremlin, ma. <laughs> they don't remember. Oh, I know you are, ma. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't care. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I do love the play style of Stripe, but Stripe is definitely a function for me. The, the Gizmo and Stripe and Kick Rocks, bro. Yeah, just a freaking function, bro. I'm sorry. T- call Combo Fiend, bro. That's a, that's a function of 100%. All right? Like, just bring me the hype characters. Bring me the DC characters. When it's time, you want to blow this game up again? I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't going to be Gremlins that are going to get people hyped, right? It's going to be Samurai Jack. It's going to be Static Shock. It's going to be DC characters all day, baby. So I don't I – don't, you can spam all you want about Gremlins. No one gives a damn. Okay? Why are no you hating, damn. bro? Why are you hating? I'm, I'm just – I'm not hating. I'm, am I lying? He wants please John, tell me I'm lying right now. Please just tell John me, please. Snow Bunny, man. Just he want please who? Please tell me right now. John Snow Bunny, man. That's who you want, Bam? Who? John or, Snow, man. Or you, E.E.? E. That's Bam. Bam, Bam, I, you no, basic, bro. I, no, I did not say that. What are you talking about? <laughs> so he's he lying? So like, he's, how are you getting... He, is he spamming? How are you getting shared in broad daylight? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did that come out of my mouth? Like, why are you believing him? That sounds like, sound like, sound like a Bam take, man. What, that I want Jon Snow? <laughs> Yo, he's getting Damn. tight. <laughs> that sounds like a BAM take? No, man. Yo, he's done, bro. The strays are unreal right now. Oh, dude. The strays are unreal. Maybe it had to be you, Bammy. Yo, his oh. face, bro. <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, man. I believe you, BAM. I believe you. <laughs> Come on, man. I got videos on who I want in the game. So if y'all want to see them, you can just check those out. I got videos. Y'all already know who the fuck I want. I'm, I'm so chilling, tight, bro. Dude. What the hell was that, dude? <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, guys, to wrap this up, thank you guys so much for watching the Weekly Toast Episode 3. It's been a pleasure as per usual. We'll see you in the next two weeks. This is a bi-weekly podcast, of course. Uh, we'll look into having a guest for the next episode. So if you guys want to 
to you know give us some suggestions of who you want you can let us know in the chat below like straight up just let us know in the chat below or of course you can tag us on twitter to let us know who you want to see in the next episode but guys we will catch you on the flip side take it easy guys have a good one Peace.